Hi, and welcome to the third episode of Learning to Edit in DaVinci Resolve. My name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, we're going to cover creative editing in Resolve. So we're going to look at three-point editing techniques. We're going to look at replacing clips. We're going to look at markers, nesting, speed changes, and transitions. But first of all, we're going to look at how you actually search for clips in your edit page. So if we look here, this is our media pool. And right at the top here, we've got this little search icon. If you click on that, you can actually search for clips by codec or reel or even name that we're going to do now. So if I just type in bay, you can see here that now I'm just limited to the shots that actually have the word bay in there. And you can refine your filter just by pulling down this menu here. And we can also search for shots in the timeline. If we click up here on the edit index, this gives us a list of all the shots in the order they are in the timeline. So if I click any one of these, you'll see that the playhead jumps to that clip. I mean, what we could do is search for a particular shot. So let's click on the search bar and say store. So these are the two shots in this timeline that are named store. And we can clear that search by just simply pressing the X here. Another really useful tool in editing is the ability to match frame. If you go to a shot that you like, if you press F, it will load the original clip into the source viewer and match the frame that you're at. You can then have a look through the clip and see if there's maybe a better part of the shot to use. You can also reverse match frame as well. So let me just move my timeline. If we're on this shot here and I want to find that particular frame in my timeline, just press F from the source viewer and it will show me exactly where it was in the timeline. If you're match framing and you have multiple layers, just be aware that when you press match frame, it will do the topmost video layer. So if you want to do the layer underneath, you would need to deselect the auto select icon, which is these icons here, and then press F. And you see it's now loaded up this clip here. Okay, so I'm going to show you a really cool technique for replacing clips. We've got a shot here of a guy arriving at work. And we want to replace that with an alternative shot. So what we do, let's have a look at our rushes. And here we have an alternative shot. And without using mark in or mark out, I'm going to replace this clip. So I'm going to use my playhead as a kind of in point. And I'm going to use my timeline playhead as the other in point. And to bring that clip to the timeline, I just press F11 or simply drag and drop as a replace. And it's done. Next, I want to show you three-point editing. This is a very common technique and used when you want to define an exact specific area on a timeline using in and out points. So we've got an interview here and we're going to use three-point editing to insert a cutaway. And the names of course, are the so This is going to be our mark-in. It turns out in the movie that it was his sled. And then only after we named the shop uh, by certain... And there is our mark out. So I've done an in and then out on the timeline. So let's find a new shot. Let's play it through. I'm using JKL to go back and forth. Let's mark in there. So what I've got now is an in and an out on the timeline and a single in point on my source. Now, if I press F10, the clip is going to come down from the source in overwrite mode and fill this gap. The duration is going to be determined by the out point here. The first thing I have to do before that, though, is route the video. The video is currently assigned to the video track one, and we want to route the video to video track two, and I don't want the dialogue to come down. So I'm now going to press either F10 or I can drag and say overwrite. And there you see the shot has filled exactly the duration that we wanted was it turns out in the movie that it was his sled and then only after we named the shop uh, by certain course of events now if I undo that what I want to show you is that if I'd have dragged simply dragged down from the source viewer the in and out point would have been ignored so f10 to bring it back down and we're done so let's do one more three-point edit but this time we're gonna back time so we're gonna use the out point as our mark so let's have a look at this shot here Okay, so this is him cycling into the office. So we're gonna use a three-point edit to change this shot. I wanna do a mark in and a mark out on that shot. The easiest way of doing that is just press X. Now what I need to do is find a new shot. And this time I'm gonna use an out point as a reference. So let's take our out there. What it's going to do now is it's going to line up the out point here with the out point here and back time to the in point. First we need to route our video track 
down to the correct channel and press F10. And you can see there's our out point. And the in point has just been calculated automatically by the duration of the in and out. Let's do one last quick example of three-point editing, but this time incorporating cutaways. So we've got an interview here, and it's got a jump cut. Bike shop in this area. Up until that point, most of the people... So to cover the jump cut, what we're going to do is find a clip. And let's take this shot here. It's already got in and out points on it. So if we press Alt-I and Alt-O, that will clear the in and out points. So Alt to clear. And let's just mark an in point. And that's quite nice with the move there. So we're marking in. Let's mark our in and out on our interview to define the duration. There was no bike shop in this area. Up until that point, most of the people in this neighborhood had to go. So that's our area we're going to cover. There's our in, our out, and there's our in point. And this is going to create a cutaway. Remember to route the video. So let's push that out to video two and either F10 or overwrite. And there's our cutaway. Neighborhood. And there was no bike shop in this area. Up until that point, most of the people in this neighborhood had to go all the way to the mission. So let's take a look at markers. I use markers all the time for various things. So let me show you why. Let's have a look at another shot. Let's bring in this one here. This is actually a really long shot, but you might just want to mark at the point where the bridge comes into focus. So I'm just going to press M for mark. And if I press M again, double M, you can actually add notes to it. So we can name the marker. We can change the color and press done. If I just do a quick mark in, mark out, and if I just literally put that onto the timeline, you'll see that the marker stays with it. To delete that clip from the timeline, just highlight it and press backspace. So that's marking clips. I can also mark the timeline. Let's say we want to put some name supers on this promo, but we don't want to do it until the end. What I'm going to do is just mark the areas that need naming. Part of the goal here... M to mark, M again, so I can add some notes. So now you see that the marker is on the timeline. If I put my mouse over it, you can read it. And once my timeline is populated with markers, I can use the edit index to search for them. So click here, show markers, and there it is. And if I just move my timeline and click here, you see the playhead jump to the marker. You can also use shift up and down to search for markers. So I'll just put another couple of markers on the timeline. I'll show you, so shift up, Shift down, jumps between my markers. To delete a marker, just highlight it and backspace. Let's take a look at nesting. Nesting is a really easy way of adding one timeline into another. This allows you to move multiple clips very easily. So we're currently on sequence four, and I'm going to add another sequence into this sequence. Let's take the sequence nine. If I double click, that will open the sequence, but if I simply drag and drop it to my timeline, you'll see that it comes down as one clip. But inside here is lots of clips. Let me just zoom out the timeline so you can see that. Now I can leave this as it is, or I can actually go inside the nest. If I right hand click, I can either open up its original timeline, or I can just decompose in place. If I decompose in place, any changes I make to it now will not affect the original sequence. And there we have all our edits, and these can now be used in our program. So another thing you might want to do when you're editing in Resolve is to create subclips. This clip here, for example, is a very long clip. We might just want to split it up into smaller sections. It just makes it a little bit easier to handle in the edit. Particularly good if you've got long interviews, for example. So let's just find the original bin. There it is. And we can go through the clip now and find points that we want to subclip. So I'm just going to mark an in and an out point, and then simply right-hand click and say Create Subclip. And there's our subclip. So let's just create one more. Mark in, mark out. Create subclip. So now I've got two much smaller clips based on the original clip. They're linked to the original media, so if I did delete this clip here, these two would go offline as well. So now if I load this clip into the source viewer, you see that it's a much more manageable size. So now we're going to look at speed changes in Resolve. And for this, I need a new sequence. So just double click, and here's my new sequence. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a simple clip speed change. So here's our shot, and if we right-hand click on it, we can select Change Clip Speed, and you simply type in your new speed. So I'll put 130% and click Change. And the clip is now playing back at 130%, really easy. 
So that's speeding a clip up. What happens when we want to slow down? I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to right hand click, change clip speed again, but this time I'm going to slow things down. So I'm going to type 50% and I'm going to select ripple sequence. So what's going to happen is the timeline is going to ripple to account for this speed change. So this clip is now twice the length, so the timeline has rippled up accordingly. Now when we play that back, you'll notice it's not very smooth playback, and that's because there's frames missing. So we can adjust that in the inspector. Click the top right corner and scroll down to retime and scaling. So the retime process can be changed to nearer, frame blend or optical flow. Optical flow will actually generate new frames, giving a really smooth result. So that's basic speeding up and slowing down. Let's have a look at fit to fill and retiming using curves. So if we take a look at our timeline down here, you'll see we have a gap. Let me just zoom into there. And what I want to do is mark this gap. We're going to do a fit to fill. So if I press X to give me a mark in and mark out, what I need to be aware of is that I'm currently sat on a large piece of audio down here. So I'm going to deselect the auto selector so it's not included and press X. And there you see we've done my mark in and mark out for this duration here. The actual duration of the in and out point on the timeline doesn't matter to me. The fit to fill will calculate the retime it needs in order to fill the gap perfectly. So let's use this shot here. Now it's already got a mark in and mark out on it, so use Alt I and Alt O to remove that. So around about here is going to be my mark in. I move down the clip and put a mark out. And all we need to do now is drag this to the timeline viewer and drop on fit to fill. And it will retime automatically to fill that gap. So let's get a bit more creative with our speed change. If we right hand click on the clip itself and choose retime curve, just zoom in. What we can do now is use this pull down menu and select retime speed. So what I want to do here is add a keyframe to change speed halfway through. So it's going to come through the shot and about there I'm going to add a keyframe. So press alt and click on the retime curve itself. And then I can push up with my mouse. My mouse literally changes icon when it gets to here. And I can push up or down to slow down. So we push up to change the speed. And we've now got a speed change at this point here. Now the speed change is going to be quite hard. So what I can do is click on the keyframe itself and change it into a Bezier point. This gives us a much smoother transition. So we can easily extend this clip to close that gap and we'll be looking at trimming in the next tutorial. To close the retime curve, just press this icon. So the final part of this tutorial, we're going to look at transitions. Click up here in the effects library and then your toolbox, you'll see all your transitions. Any third party plugins that you have installed will also appear here. You can organize your transitions by clicking here. So you can show just video transitions, for example. As you move down your transitions, you see this little star appearing and you can use this to mark favorites. Then you can show favorites. So it's really easy to organize them. To apply a transition, just drag and drop it straight onto the timeline. And if I play that back, and there's our dissolve. To delete the transition, I'm just going to zoom in, just click on it and press backspace. Command T is the shortcut for bringing down a transition and you can change which transition that is by simply right hand clicking and saying set a standard transition. So when your transition is highlighted you can use the inspector to change all the properties really easily. We can change the style of the curve for example to give a more dynamic look and we can apply this to multiple transitions if they're selected. If you want to save that as a preset simply right hand click and say create transition preset. Just say OK and that's added to the transitions list and that could also be used as a favourite. So now we've covered more creative editing techniques. In the next episode we're going to look at trimming in DaVinci Resolve. Thank you for listening.